Hi, I'm Chad, and you're watching Square Body Stuff. What's going on, everybody? Me and, where's he at? There you are. Me and Tex are out in the shop, working on the low 339 still yet. It's still a little warm, so I got fans going, so hope you uh, can ignore the background noise of the fans. It's not real bad in here. It's eh, about 80, 87 degrees. That's not bad, but it's just kind of radiant heat off the roof. So anyways, I'm gonna keep the fans going. Uh, if you're new here, this is the first video you're watching. I'll bring you up to date on what this is real quick. This is a little 339 small block Chevy. How did I get a 339? Well, it's a 305 block board, 60 over, with a 3.75 inch stroke. Same stroke as a 383 or a 400 small block Chevy. It's a forged crank, got a bunch of forged goodies on the inside. This is a nitrous or a uh, power adder application built first one I've ever built for any type of power adder so I'm just taking you all along for the ride in the last video on this little engine we went over how to check your piston to valve clearance and uh, that step was a little bit out of order because really you should degree your cam in and know exactly where it's at before you check your piston to valve clearance because if you happen to advance or retard your cam and you're really close uh, it can make a big difference so really you need to degree your cam first i think i mentioned that in the video uh but yeah degree your cam first get it where it's going to be at then check your piston to valve clearance and then proceed on from there the camshaft i'm using is a summit brand 1107 is the part number it's a uh, the cheapest off the shelf cam i could put in this 305 back when i first started playing around with it that had the most lift and duration and everything uh, that the factory heads and everything could handle so I just wanted the chop chop that that was the main reason I bought this cam well Turns out this cam is actually a really nice nitrous cam. Uh, it's got 114 degrees of lobe separation angle and The duration is at well, I've got the cam card here I'll read off it and I'll put a post a uh, picture of the cam card up so you can read it too It doesn't list the actual LSA on it. You have to uh, go off the lobe center on the air intake exhaust and do the mathematical stuff on that to figure out what your LSA is uh, And so yeah, the cam card uh, Intake lift on the lobe is 325 exhaust is 338. Oh hush text <laughs> uh, Let's see duration is 234 intake 244 on the exhaust at 50 thousandths now, uh, the lift with 1.5 ratio rockers is supposed to be 487, 508 intake and, valve, or intake and exhaust respectively, but I'm running 1 to 6 ratio rockers, so that gets my lift up to, I have to read off my notes here, uh, where's that, oh, okay, here it is, intake will be uh, 0.515 on the lift, exhaust would be 0.539 on the exhaust lift so bumped it up a little bit uh try to help out this little engine to breathe with the uh, not they're kind of smallish heads they're they're actually pretty decent match for what i'm building here those are just some Speedmaster ones i got on sale i've got a video out about that it was kind of a big ordeal whenever i had to get them here but uh go watch that video normally i would probably install this at uh two degrees advance from intake center line, which the intake center line on this particular cam is 114 degrees. So I would install the cam at uh, the 112. But I've done some research on a power adder type application, what works best for that. And it's actually the opposite. Uh, it really needs to be advanced more. I mean, like I said, this cam already has five degrees advanced uh, ground into it, so it's at a 109 center line. Um, and I'm not sure, I've actually went two degrees above that, so it's gonna be, should be installed at 107 intake center line. Now, I'll show you how to do all that, how I figured all that out here in just a little bit. But that's where I'm at because, and a little bit of theory behind that is advancing your cam with the power adder situation you really don't need a whole lot of help getting air into the engine 
uh, but it's getting it out. You'll end up with pumping loss if you don't start the exhaust uh, exhaust event soon enough. All that extra pressure in there uh, is getting actually putting pressure against your piston because your valves aren't open enough at a certain time. So it's better to advance it a little bit to get your exhaust side working sooner. And I guess that's the best way I can put it. I'm gonna try to explain the LSA or lobe separation angle. Uh, this is a kind of a drawing of your camshaft. You got your exhaust lobe, your intake lobe. Your LSA is the angle from uh, imaginary center or imaginary lines from the center of your exhaust max lift to the center of your intake max lift. And this camshaft is actually 114 degrees. But on the cam card, it doesn't say that. You have to do the math. But it does show that the exhaust is opening or at max lift at 119 degrees. The intake center line is at 109. You add those together. I got a times there, but it's actually supposed to be add. You got 228 degrees total. So all we're doing is averaging those two numbers. So you divide that by two, you get 114. That's our lobe separation angle right there. Now this 109, that's our intake center where it's uh, installed at. And you take that away from your LSA and that's how many degrees advanced the cam is installed. That still means if you put this camshaft in or that timing set in and just lined up dot to dot, you're not straight up you're plus five degrees because that is actually ground into the pattern of the camshaft you can't the only way you can change that is moving your uh, sprockets or that way that that is actually ground into the cam and if you remember earlier i said i've got the crankshaft gear installed for plus two degrees so that doesn't mean it's just two degrees advanced it's actually two degrees advanced from where it was ground which is five degrees so we're at seven now I've went through and double checked it with the degree wheel to make sure everything lines up the right way and it comes out to 121 on your intake center line or your exhaust center line uh, 107 on the intake center line so you still get the 228 total degrees and you divide that by two we still get our 114 degree lobe separation angle that way you know all your measurements and everything's right and then you divide it by the intake center line which is now 107 and that gets us plus seven degrees advanced. And I know it seems kind of like a lot uh, of advance, but what I research the stuff for the nitrous or power adder applications, they they like typically from six to eight. All right, let's let's uh, let's move over to the engine and I'll show you how I've got everything set up real quick, uh, how to set up your degree wheel, zero it in. That way you know you're on the uh, top dead center the way you're supposed to be. And then we'll kind of go over how I found those numbers or what to look for. Again, I'm not the best at explaining. I may jumble some stuff up a little bit, but I, I'll try to make sure I get it corrected before it's a, a video that you're watching. Of course, obviously, you're going to need a degree wheel and a way to attach it to your crankshaft. I've got a, uh, it's actually a washer, the harmonic balancer, balancer washer, and a short bolt. I think it's a, I think it's just a flywheel bolt uh, for this main transmission and I machine this washer down to go inside the hub of this to hole inside this so we don't have to worry about trying to center it then I just got a piece of stainless wire you can use coat hanger whatever you just need something kind of sturdy that you can move around I've got my dial indicator set up on a push rod and I mean it's not 100% perfectly straight, but you need to try to get it as straight as possible this way and this way They do make special tools just for this. You don't have to mess with all this, but I don't have those uh, But yeah, they do make better tools than this to do this with but this is the setup I have and works pretty good my lifters again uh, if you've been watching my videos my setup lifters are solid and You also need a some sort of a piston stop and you could also do this with the cylinder head on. You just have to have a piston stop that goes through the spark plug hole. And, you know, just get everything set up about the same way. But you'll just have the, uh, the cylinder head in the way. To zero it out, you've got your piston stop. And you'll want to turn your wrench, turn it over to where it just stops. Get a little bit of pressure on it. You don't want to hammer down on it and mark up your piston. 
and then take note of where your indicator is at I mean it's just over 20 degrees now we rotate it the other way Okay, and we're just under 20 degrees. So I need to, and that would probably be close enough, but you know, if you wanted to really try to get it more accurate, just bend your dial or your pointer towards right in the middle of 20. Let's go back around the other way and double check. Pretty much same spot so that piston stop is at 20 degrees on either side of zero so now when we take the piston stop off zero is going to be zero don't move this don't move that don't move anything else that way you're staying accurate all right now that should be top dead center uh, my timing marks on the cam gear and crank gear are lined up the way they're supposed to be this is top dead center of your intake stroke so our intake valve should be opening it is but I'm not gonna worry about that right now because I want to make sure that my dial indicator is zeroed out that's another step we need to do uh, bring Bring it around to where your lifter is on the base side, the base, base circle of your camshaft. And then zero out your dial indicator. Mine's already zeroed out, but you just have to move that dial around, get it zero, lock it down. That way it stays at zero. And I usually try to like bump the engine, you know, bump stuff around. That way if it bounces a little bit, uh, try to get to where it comes back to zero every time. All right, so right now we're at top dead center on the intake stroke so as I crank this over intake valve is opening and kind of bump it until it doesn't move anymore and that is your max load lift and your intake center line but if you just do it that way you could still be a few degrees off so what i like to do is actually do the same way we did with finding zero at top dead center on the uh, degree wheel i will actually open it up till it's uh it didn't really matter how many thousands just uh, 10 or 15 thousandths before max lift and then I will also and write down what degree that is and then roll it on over to however many thousandths 10 thousandths past max lift and you can go 50 I mean 50 is kind of a common uh, measurement they use for a cam spec so you can go 50 uh, do the same thing mark down each uh, measurement on your piece of paper and then divide that by two and that will give you your degree so let's test that out let's just roll this over and like i said it doesn't have to be any certain number usually since we're at 323 i'll just stop it at zero before max lift and then take my reading off my degree wheel 70 78 i'll call it 78 and i'll write that down and then we just roll it on over past our max lift back till it gets to zero and if you go just a little bit past you don't have to go all the way back around just go a good bit past where you were 
and then come back to it nice and easy. The longer wrench you have, the easier it is to turn it over. And then I like to kind of bump it. All right, there's zero. Now we are at 136. So let's do the math. We had 78 degrees before, so, or 136 after. That equals 214 degrees. Divide that by two, because we're just averaging these two numbers. And then you get 107. And that's exactly where it's supposed to be. 107 degrees uh, intake center line installed. That's what I'm gonna write down on my paperwork. So as far as just degreeing your camshaft in, that's pretty much the all there is to it. Make sure you're double checking your intake center line, know where it's at. Uh, basically the camshaft is degreed in right now, but there's a lot of stuff you need to check. Also, if you wanna go into it, check your lobe lift, write that down. Uh, Cause I like to record my lobe lift where I'm at right now on both intake and exhaust. Then I also, once I get the cylinder head on there, the valve train in, I like to uh, record the total valve lift uh, because these are all machine parts. They should be really close, but if I just added uh, 1.6 to the lobe lift, and that's how you get your your valve lift, is your lobe lift times one point, whatever ratio your rocker is, uh, that should be your total valve lift. But um, you got to double check all that and have it wrote down. That way, if you're messing around with this, you have an issue uh, while it's in the truck, you're having an issue, you can go back to your notes and you can put a dial indicator on, on your rocker arm or on your valve retainer and you can roll it over if, and know exactly, you know, if your valve isn't opening up as far as it used to, well, you've got a bad lifter or a bad cam, something's going on. And you could really, you know, if you're really wanting to keep track of it, you could do all of those like every time you change the oil. That way you know if you got one lobe starting to wear or not. I don't know. I mean, if you really want to get into it, that is a possibility you could do. Now, I guess while we got it here, I'm going to go ahead and explain the uh, other stuff on the cam card. Uh, like your duration, uh, opening, closing. I kind of show you what that means on the, on the degree wheel uh, and how to check it. I'm just going to do it on the intake valve. That way I don't have to change everything over and do it because the exhaust is the same exact thing. Uh, it's just happening at a different spot on the degree wheel, but you can check your, uh, your duration. Uh, you can check your overlap, all that kind of stuff. All right, let's talk about duration real quick. Uh, all duration is, is the amount of time your valve is open from when it starts to open till it closes. That's your duration. Now the final duration, which, I mean, it's on your cam car, but say you get a used cam or you buy an engine that has a cam in it, you don't know what it is. That's where these degree wheels really come in handy. You can actually, you can actually spec out a cam and know exactly what you've got with one of these guys if you know how to do it. So now I'm gonna show you how you find your duration. And, but <laughs> with that, you'll see on the cam card, it's got, the advertised duration, and whenever you're ordering a cam, looking at them in the catalogs, whatever, they'll have their advertised duration, and then the duration at 50,000 slift. Of course, your duration at 50,000 slift is a lot lower. The reason they do that is 50 thousandths of lift is enough, uh, enough lift to cut out any variables of your opening ramp, just yeah, there's there's a lot more to that, but 50,000 just gives, cuts out more variables. Right, I'm going to crank it over. And you'll see the needle start to move. You don't want to go super fast or anything. And then I'll just kind of bump it until I get to 50. And then I go a little past. Yeah, I went a little past. So I'm going to just back it up. And just back it up to almost closed. Start over again here. All right, there is 50 thousandths of lift on the opening. So we are at, looks like nine degrees before top dead center. Now we'll roll it around. All right, again, there's max lift. We've already got that wrote down. It's coming down 
Oh, went too far. I didn't I didn't count my turns there. Okay, now we're back up. Now we're closing. This is the last little bit. Stand up and look. Oh. All right, there's 50. So we're at 220, one, two, three, 223 degrees after top dead center. We'll take the nine plus 223, and that will get our duration at 50,000 slift. And that comes out to 232 degrees. Let me check our TAM cam card. Uh, uh, it shows we're a couple degrees off, which that could be within my measuring tools. I could just be a little bit off here, there. Not a huge deal. Uh, this will still get you close. Like I said, if you're trying to find out what a camshaft is, this will get you within a degree or two. Uh, like I said, it's I've already done this once. The last time I done this on it, I come out at 233. So, uh, yeah. Not a big deal within a couple degrees. You can do the same thing on the exhaust lobe to find out what your duration is at 50 thousandths. And yeah, that's that's duration. Now typically, if you have more duration, your intake valve and exhaust valves are open longer, you're gonna have more overlap while your, in or your exhaust valve is closing and your intake valve is opening. And that's how you get that lumpity lump, choppy chop, that's, that we all know and love. Uh, but, as in this case with this camshaft, the lobe separation angle is wider. So the overlap isn't near as much. So it doesn't have as much chop-chop as if I had this, a, the same or a, a camshaft just like this, except for with a 110 LSA or a tighter LSA like they run in circle track or or you know bracket race or anything like that you know higher rpm stuff they uh they have a lot tighter lobe separation angle you have more overlap and that helps with scavenging at higher rpms so how do you find your overlap well to find the overlap the best way to do it the way i've always done it is you look at your um look at your advertised duration and that could be you know if it doesn't specify you're not real sure where they take that reading at and it's hard to take a reading at actual from zero to zero on your open and close. That's why we do it at 50 because of the opening ramp and all that stuff. So normally the advertised duration is usually either like six thousand, sometimes three thousand, um, which that's the case with this one here. I had I checked and checked and checked, tried to figure out where they where they got their advertised duration from on this camshaft, and the best I can come up with is at three thousands of valve lift or three thousandths of lobe lift all right back to the whiteboard here we got our exhaust lobe or intake lobe of course our 114 lobe separation angle this up here is our overlap and i could i'll show you here in just a minute on the engine kind of what the what it looks like as far as the the uh, lifters moving in the overlap stage but how to find the overlap is you'll take your advertised duration or if you don't have the advertised duration and you've got your stuff set up like this, you can record your numbers at, get your duration from like uh, three thousandths of valve lift. Something really low but really distinct, you know, that's why this, this is taken at three thousandths. So that way you know you've only got, your duration is really close. Or the overlap's really close. Anyways, so... On our cam card, it has 313 for the exhaust duration, 303 for the intake duration. You add those together, we get 616, divide that by four, and you get 154 degrees, or 154, and then you divide, or uh, take the lobe separation angle away from that, and you get your 40 degrees of overlap. That overlap right there is good for kind of a hot street, uh, mild strip, type application uh, not typically for all that racing or anything like that but again this engine uh, if I was to be building it in for an NA application I would probably go with the camshaft that had a tighter lobe separation angle that would make it have 
more overlap and but because we could change this number the 114 to 110 let's just do that right now if this camshaft had the same duration but only had uh, let's see what like 110 LSA so four four yeah, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So it only have four. It have 44 degrees of overlap. That's still not too bad. And the same thing goes for duration. If we ch was to change the duration, add more duration to this, that would change the overlap without changing your lobe separation angle. All right, I'm gonna show you real quick what it looks like with the overlap on the lifters. Okay, exhaust valves opening, closing, and see it's it's still going down in that intake rock arm or lifter is starting to come up so that's your overlap so during that time i'm not sure if you could see up there at the top what the piston was doing uh, i'll back it up and we can just look at that but actually i go to on the degree wheel at one 109 uh yeah where our intake valve starts to open up is right there you can watch that piston and it's still coming up as that intake valve starts to open. Uh, for me, it's kind of neat to watch the piston go through its cycle as I'm watching the what the valves and stuff will be doing. Because when you're just sitting there watching the engine run, you don't think about uh, the piston is... Well, this is the intake stroke. It's going down, sucking in air. But it's already coming back up before the intake valve actually closes. The last thing I want to check is overall valve lift with the rocker arms and everything installed. And that would be pretty much the last measurement I need to write down. All right, I got my dial indicator all zeroed out. Let's turn it over. We are on the exhaust valve. There's 500 thousandths lift, 10, 20, 30, like 36, a little over 36. All right, I'm going to move it over to the intake side and we'll, I'll show you the results. Now on our paper, I've got... Uh, of course, the lobe lift is 323, 337, rocker arm ratio 1.6. If you do the math, it should come out to 0.515 and 0.39, or 5, 0.539, but the actual lift is 507, 536. Well, I know this is a little bit of a longer video, but... Uh, if you stuck it through this long, I appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something. Again, uh, I'm not the best at explaining stuff, so uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but again, I hope you learned something from this. Uh, yeah, and again, a lot of this stuff is just how I do it as far as the setup, the tools I have. There are different tools you could use. Uh, you may have different tools. You may want to buy different tools when I use, but there are different things to use. That pretty much wraps up the bottom end of this engine. Uh, I'll pull the camshaft back out. I gotta clean it up because I just kind of stuck it in there, lubed up the first two lobes just to do the, the check on number one cylinder, to check everything. And now I need to pull it back out, clean it up good, stick it back in, button it all up, and we will have the short block ready to go. And then we could turn to working on the cylinder heads. I know they're brand new, shouldn't need any work, but uh, I'm gonna do a little clean up on them, do some checking on them because it's a good thing to do. You can't just trust that they're ready to go. I think I'm going to try to maybe play around with a couple of different sets of valve springs, see what I like. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, hit that subscribe button, hit the join button. Uh, I appreciate you guys donating anything you can because that would help out the cause, help me keep doing what I'm doing. So keep that up and yeah, give us a thumbs up, like, comment, share, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, I think that's it for this video. Till next time, y'all keep your square bodies rolling, and we'll catch you later.